Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Monday night. Hope everyone had a uh, decent Monday for the first Monday of the year. 10.15 in the p.m. California time here, January 5th, 2026. Uh, latest activity specifically here on the globe in the green flag up in Alaska 2.0. Getting a swarm of activity out here across the Japan region. Notice all the newer quake activity firing up here as well. Around Japan, Japan northward, southward, all over the place. Look at this uptick going on here across the area. I've been talking about this for, oh, a little while. And it's only increasing in terms of the numbers out here. Uh, earlier this afternoon... Uh, early evening, I should say. We had 5.7, this earthquake originally coming in as a 6.2 north of Hi uh, Hiroshima, Japan. A uh, number of aftershocks, if you will, in the area as well. But also notice up north here, we have a newer quake, uh, northern end of the Japan Trench at a 4.5. So things are uh, still kind of increasing out here. Plus a 4.9 and a little bit further south here into the Izu Trench. Main focus and main concern right now, uh, is specifically around the Nankai Trough area, uh, up through Japan, the, the uh, northern end here, and the southern end of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench. It's definitely looking uh, like something bigger wants to pop out here. So that's an area that we need to watch pretty closely. As, uh, you know, it, it could um, produce a big earthquake at any time there. Uh, Indonesia area, pretty good cluster across the Java Trench. Uh, let's see what else we got. New Zealand, not so much going on down there. A couple earthquakes back into the Tonga Trench again. Tonga Trench, which is uh, mostly deeper quakes that stir up there in that region. Uh, let's check out the West Coast here, see if anything's stirring up out here, because it's been a little quiet down here in Southern California, I would say. Really nothing new since uh, the morning's update. There's been a handful of smaller quakes out there. Uh, up and down the area of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. One earthquake down here on the Brawley Seismic Zone as well. But that was a earthquake from early this morning, 1 o'clock early Monday morning. But not a whole lot uh, going on there for now across Southern California. The Bay Area looks fairly quiet. Although one, yeah, this is recent here. One recent earthquake, a 2.6. And it's underneath the Bay Area here where they believe the Hayward Fault and the Rogers Creek Fault connect. And of course, you know, with that type of length in the fault system, that can produce up to a 7.5 if these rupture all at once. So a little interesting to see some earthquake activity underneath that region where they believe that is linked here, those two faults. Clear Lake Volcanic Field, nothing new up there, just earthquakes happening, geothermal fields. Um... Trimmer map, I was just looking at that. There's only a small amount up here this evening. Got uh, about 27 epicenters there of slow slip events underneath the Oregon Northern California border here. These are trimmers being reported down below the locked area. Of course, that's increasing strain as the um, two plates there slowly slip past one another in the deeper areas, but upstream where the locked area is, it's continuing to build pressure for the next big mega quake out here a couple earthquakes here at yellowstone national park they did uh it looks like they did pretty good putting uh these up on the map here today told you they would let's see what we got though see what's going on uh far as the official seismograph viewer goes here let's see what we have let's see if there's anything really stirring up um do they uh well, that's interesting. Not a whole lot showing up there on that graph. Not so much on that one either. There's a couple of very small earthquakes, but these look, uh, I don't know, they look a little different than what they did this morning here. I wonder if uh been some sensitivity adjustment. Looks like maybe some wind firing up right now. Notice these lines starting to get pretty thick on the uh, graphs there. I don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity, but I want to check the graphs, uh, see if there's any big wind events going on up there. And I would say yes. So that's what we're seeing showing up there across uh, some of those exposed uh, seismograph stations there. All the, the elements outside, the wind and snow and whatever else is going on up there. Ice, these temperatures all all below freezing. Uh, that can have an effect there on the seismograph stations as far as what they look like. But really no big earthquake showing up there for now. Not even any, not even any type of swarm. 
up around uh, Cleveland, Ohio, near Madison, Ohio, got a 2.6. This is the area that's had a, oh, I think it was last year here, had a, a bunch of little earthquakes up there. Occasionally we do get them across the area, uh, eastern portion of the country, down through the south, all through the west, kind of... Uh, Outlining there the North American uh, craton, which is not a crouton, but a craton that uh, has been relatively stable there while everything else deforms and moves around it. You can pretty much follow that line of, uh, of uh, outline there of that North American center block there, so to speak. Uh, but nothing really major going on across the eastern portion of the country there for now. We got Hawaii stirring up a little bit up around Mauna Loa. Big time snow up there, I heard. Lots of snow. A couple earthquakes. Um, nothing big. I don't think they've got their site up yet as far as their data goes. Um, I've been looking at the Kilauea volcano data, and they've just been offline here for a little while. Uh, since about the uh, 30th of December. Let's see if they're even running. You know, I can understand if there's data loss up there at Mauna Loa with all the snow, but down here at Kilauea Volcano, you know, we should uh, we should be able to see the current data. See, this is still offline there from the UTC time of the twenty of the thirty uh, first of last month, and, and that uh, tells us right there that uh, well, some work needs to be done out here. Even the deformation stations that show the inflation there across Kilauea Volcano um, have been offline. So really, there's no way to uh, no way to know how much this is going up. This is from the 30th, see. So technically, by now we should be probably up very close to the eruption stage there at Kilauea Volcano. I don't know why their data is offline, but hopefully they get that up and running soon. Uh, I guess we can check the webcams here, see what's going on up at the summit. Uh, take a little peek here and see if we're uh, Spilling any lava over out there? Well, it looks a little uh, little dark out there. I don't really see anything showing up. There's a geotherm uh, a, uh, thermal image there. Still looks pretty hot, obviously. But, uh, yeah, well, hopefully they get that up and running soon. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Man, just this whole area looks crazy active right now. I would definitely watch out. Deeper activity there underneath the Sea of Osk. We got some big time adjustment, I think, about ready to take place there. Uh, the rest of the world here, just typical earthquakes through the uh, Middle America Trench and down through the Peru Chile Trench here. Just typical smaller quake activity. Nothing big across the Atlantic for now. Um, let's see. I am going to adjust this just a tad bit, just a little bit here really didn't do too much but I want to keep the last 24 hours here of earthquake data on the globe uh, let's see yeah let's check space weather see if anything stirred up here since uh, the update not a whole lot going on there on the Sun it looks like huh? pretty uh, pretty quiet got some sea flare activity it looks like that's coming off of uh, uh, maybe a combination here of these little weak sunspots that are now uh, drifting off there on the western side of the Sun we are left with really not a whole lot in terms of magnetic structure complexity within these sunspots here so you know there's really not a whole lot left here folks on the earth facing side of the sun that uh, warrants any flare threats um, back across the far side we'll take a look here and see if anything's stirred up here's the earth facing side man even on the far side here it looks pretty quiet I don't see any major developed dark areas. These are some weak areas that we just got through dealing with, but they were weakening uh, when they uh, departed the Earth-facing side. So uh, I think we're going to be entering into a very quiet uh, space event. Look at this. Every time I look at the far side of the sun, I see eyes and mouth. It almost looks like multiple faces there. See the two eyes and the mouth? They're all over. There's an eye, a nose one eye a nose and a mouth that is crazy two more eyes up here nose and a, a mouth here man maybe i need a little sleep <laughs> all right uh flare threat pretty low folks these are a little bit on the elevated side i, I don't know why these haven't been updated yet 
one percent or less for next flare m flare probably at about 30 percent chance um and that's that i mean there's not a whole lot of aurora activity either stirring up and there's none in the forecast there so that is what it is on the sun for now um day five day five up here shows well you know winter can bring some uh severe weather out there across portions of the south we do need to watch this closely because i can stir up some tornado activity the storm prediction center has already issued a 15 percent chance for severe weather uh this is going to be for friday of uh this coming week here day five so we'll watch that as we get a little bit closer. That's going to be, uh, I think it's going to have to do something with this low pressure system that we're dealing with right now. That's going to scoot over there across that area and pull up some moisture, create some severe weather concerns there across this area Friday into Saturday, it looks like. So we'll watch that closely. Man, we had a decent amount of rain. I think I probably picked up at least two inches of rain today, at least it was just non-stop downpour here uh, where I'm at. Um, so we're, uh, uh, I think we need just a little break there between the storms. And it looks like we will probably get it. Uh, the next couple weeks here look pretty dry with a dominant high pressure pattern there across the west coast. Um, that's, uh, that's probably good. Probably a good thing. A little light there on the precipitation, which is okay for now. Uh, but this is a total rainfall accumulation there until the 22nd of January. Down south here, I know these guys are needing some rain. It looks like they will get some. As uh, far as any total snowfall out there, and yeah, it might be some cold air on the backside. This, you know, take this map here with yeah, just a grain of salt. That's about it because this could obviously not play out. But this is what the forecast models are kind of showing uh, as far as any snowfall accumulation here. So we'll, we'll see if that plays out, though. Uh, in the meantime, folks, I think that's about it. I'm going to call it. Hope everyone has a good Monday night. Seismograph stations out there, they're all pretty quiet for now. So, And um, Chomper's still doing good. Like I said, I'll take them in for uh, some blood work. been trying to update everyone because there's multiple platforms here that I you know, try to keep people updated on. And always I try to provide an update here at the end of this video. Um, going to take him into blood for blood work on Wednesday and see how his levels look, see what the stones are doing, uh, you know, cause he's able to definitely, um, use the bathroom pretty easy there. Uh, not full flow yet. Uh, but I'm hoping that, uh, stuff that he's taken will help, but, uh, he's in good spirits. I'm in good spirits. Uh, the kids are happy, you know, and, uh, we just need some sunshine so we can get outside and run around here. Uh, with Chomper in the field and, uh, you know, let him enjoy life. And it's good to keep moving around. And uh, hopefully we get a little, uh, we got dry weather coming up, so that's good. We'll let things dry up for a little bit and sun to come out, hopefully. Unless for some oddball reason we get socked in with fog out here in Northern California again from all this moisture. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, we had like three weeks of fog there end of uh, November and the first two weeks of December of last year. It's pretty crazy. Didn't see the sun for three weeks and temperatures hovered around 42, 43 degrees day and night. That's crazy. Anyway, have a good one, folks. We'll see you guys out here in the morning um, for the uh, Tuesday morning update. Definitely watch the Japan region here. Keep a close eye on that.